Hello, silly people, and welcome back to the channel where we are continuing working on the lore project. And I often flip between print and computer. Here we have a print, and here we have the computer. I like to work in between them because I can get nuances on paper that I don't feel I can get on computer and vice versa. Each one has their strengths. This is where we stopped last week. And I did a little drawing to flesh out some things. But again, there's still a lot of actual drawing to get done. All right, these are the touchstones. Conan, The Witcher, and Vampire Hunter D. This is going to be inked. So let's take a look at the inkings. Like this is how I usually start just scratchy scratchy. But what we want to get to, this is lore. And we'll have some more examples of lore. But this cursed by a unicorn, lore of the silver hand. Right, here are the inks of what we're going for. Pepe Larez. We have Mark Schultz. And Frank Frazetta. This is what we're going for. This is, if we get anywhere close in the ballpark, that would be a win. But first, let's take a look at so I did some some reference photos. I did a lot, a lot of shots, a lot of a lot, a lot of shots. But this is, you know, most I won't use, but I wanted some some ideas. But here is like, some shots. I like this for maybe the decapitated head, even though it's not, you know, I have to warp it and shape it and all that, but it's an idea. Another idea of the guy getting kicked in the face, somewhat, or the decapitated head, not sure. This is the lore looking off at the assaulting guy who's jumping with the knife. I like that. And then the hand position and the guy that has him around the waist. I like this. But these are just some examples of the the full. I like to take reference photos and then you can, you know, take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then mix and match and try to make something that Hopefully you'll, <laughs> hopefully you'll like, I like that expression, but yes. But we're not exactly at this point yet, but I like to you know, have an idea. So let's go. But that reminds me, I need to think about the background. I should have thought about it a long time ago, but I'm thinking a forest scene of some sort. So I'm thinking brush tool. All right, if this is the frame, I think we're gonna go wide. All right, 11 by 17. And I'm thinking uh, we'll be somewhere shifted this way. And if you cut into the threes, And then we'll have, right. we'll put the horizon fairly high. Right. It's at more or less his midsection. So just off the center. And then we'll 
These are some very rough perspective lines. And if it's This is the, the vanishing point that we're coming out. And going, uh, we can do this with a, a ruler, so I'm not too concerned, but the actions, the path is here. And so we might have this dude again slightly off. And this guy. And so we go. And then like a circular form. But, anyways, we'll have trees. It's like a forced path. And this is flatter, but this goes up a little bit. Because this guy is jumping from a higher, a higher elevation. So something like this. And I usually have a, uh, a tree as a framing device, but I don't know if this is guy is gonna be mostly inked. So it's like a shadow, a shadow overlay, a partial shadow overlay. And if we had a tree that is the darkest, and then this guy is a little bit here because he's crawling off. This guy jumping. Laura would be somewhere around here. At least that's how I see it. So now that we have mostly all the elements, let's pick up the pace and do some lore. It's a, a bit of a process where I take all the thoughts and ideas, but I usually get a rough idea of lore first before going in with more detail on costuming and anatomy after. But I'll let this play out, let this time lapse run, and I will see you at the end where I have more or less all the characters ready. So I see you in about 10.
And here are all the elements put together. Everything is on a layer, a different layer. I have fleshed out more or less all of the characters, how I more or less want them. There will be some tweaks, some changes, some slight revisions, but given the time frame, this is pretty much how it goes. I have the background on another layer and it's going to be a, a forest scene. Very loosely done because I want to focus on these guys, but there will be a tree in the extreme foreground. That's what this dark, dark shape is. So we have the characters surrounding our hero. And it's what I like doing with all the characters on different layers is that I can move things and shift things. So for example, the number four is the guy holding on to Lore's waist, trying to pull him down. But I like that I can move him up with the V and the arrow to move him around. And I can do that, do the same with all other elements. And I can do the thing, same with all other elements. And that's why I like working a computer in that I can move and shift things. Now let's talk about the use of photo reference. So here we have photo reference that I have used in the piece as a whole. So let's go by, let's go through it. So the head I used for the actual head flying off. And the figure we were just looking at, number four, I used the, myself as a model clutching this pillow to simulate what I wanted. The guy who's about to jump on Lore with the knife, I use myself again to get body position and some anatomy and knife. So photo reference is great. It's a great, extremely helpful tool for artists and helping you if you have props like prop swords. I have a few prop swords, wooden, bamboo, I have a plastic parts of the Caribbean knife I think I got from Disneyland. And it is a great tool for refining your images. So I use this for the big guy. So the last one is the dying the dying man, I getting yourself in the frame correctly and positioned right is fairly difficult, but you do what you got to do to get the image. And that is how I use photo reference. So those were selected ones. From this pool, I shot the video and then I chopped the video up by taking out screenshots of images that I liked. And so I highly recommend. So I highly recommend shooting your own reference if you have the capabilities. It really helps. So that is the image. There will be 
again some final tweaks but since we're running out of time this is where we are at now hopefully next well let's just say next friday i'll put up the inked version late behind my original schedule but given circumstances on my end i guess it is what it is So that is Lore of the Silver Hand project. I hope you have found any, any of this interesting. And I will see you for the final. And then I'll probably also do a, a post-mortem where I'll dissect what went right, what went wrong at the end. end. But thank you for joining me. Keep shining, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.